why isn't this like flu? I say it's not like flu because I've never seen anything like this. Northern Italy, Spain, Chile, New York, uh, other places where they're just overwhelmed with patients. They can't intubate all of the patients. There's patients in the hallways that are dying. This, I've never seen this before. This is not like flu. Right. Well, we don't know what it would have been like in 1918 if that we had a reprise of that right now. But certainly since then, we have seen nothing uh, in terms of an influenza season that comes anywhere in like this. There are times when ERs are very busy and they're overwhelmed with patients and they're maybe even setting up a parking lot tent to handle the extra volume. But in those situations, the hospitals aren't that busy. They're busy, but they're not overwhelmed. The other thing is that flu is typically a has seasonal and therefore geographic variation where it's big in the Southern hemisphere during their winter and our summer, and then it flips over and it gets busy in the Northern hemisphere and the summer and the Southern hemisphere takes a break. Right now, basically you have simultaneous severe epidemics, you know, within the pandemic uh, on both sides of the equator at the same time. And so this isn't behaving much like the flu that way. And I think people who try to make the argument that this is just a bad flu. It, 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 they, they fail on a couple of counts. One clearly is we do not know of a New York or an Italy or any of the other places that got hit really hard in any flu season that any of us were around to remember. Um, two, there were some people who get the flu who get very, very sick, but the majority of people who, um, you know, the flu in some ways has become what pneumonia used to be. Now that antibiotics stop pneumonia from being the old man's friend, to some extent, the flu is that, and it doesn't require that much intensive care, even during a, a bad year. Most of the people are, many of the people are nursing home patients, their DNR and the flu takes them. Um, but then we get into what this article is about, which is, are we getting the counts right? So what do you need to have an accurate death count? You need both an accurate cause of death and then an accurate count of the number of people who died who, with their accurate cause of death. And interestingly enough, vital statistics are pretty, pretty dismal in terms of you look at the way that they're collected, both in terms of determining the cause of death and in terms of counting them. Uh, and that varies between countries where uh, some countries have very accurate and up-to-date vital statistics, at least in terms of numbers, not necessarily in terms of cause, and other countries, particularly LMICs, struggle to have anything in terms of meaningfully accurate uh, counts of deaths. But getting back to the cause of death, um, there's all kinds of reasons to believe that these data are completely inaccurate for any condition except maybe trauma. I mean, it's pretty clear if you die of a gunshot wound to the head um, that that's what you died of. Uh, but how does someone get diagnosed as uh, dying of the flu mill? Somebody uh, says uh, you died during flu season? Right. And you had a little runny nose the week before and then you dropped dead, so it must have been flu. Exactly. So there's no requirement that the person be tested. And so you can imagine a nursing home patient who passes during flu season. And it's very easy for the physician who's caring for that patient to fill out a death certificate and say they died of the flu. End of story. They're 98 years old. They died of the flu. That doesn't mean they died of the flu. They may have, but they also may have died of 15 other things, but it was a convenient way of labeling it. So there's reason to believe that we could be undercounting or in many ways overcounting the number of people who die of the flu. Um, on the COVID side, uh, you really have to get into the weeds to start to understand what they're counting as a COVID positive death. So do you require a positive uh, RNA PCR? Um, if you have a positive RNA CPR, but there's clearly a secondary event like an MI or a stroke, which way is that person diagnosed and what are they calling the cause of death? Um, there are lots of things where you could have significant variability in who gets labeled as a COVID caused death as opposed to some other death. And so again, um, there's lots of reasons to suspect there's overcounting and undercounting. So you know, my take on all this is that you can take the counts as we currently know them. And someday we will have better counts perhaps. But at present, you can take all these counts and pretty much throw them out the window. They just don't mean a whole hell of a lot. And reasonable people could get counts that are off from each other by 20, 30, 40%.